Hello and welcome to week 9. Uh, the lecture is on Mulcraj Anand's The Price of Banana, Bananas and um, the angle of interpretation that I am going for is the idea of catharsis in this particular short fiction. So, a brief introduction about Mulcraj Anand. He was born in 1905 in Peshawar in British India and he died in 2004 in Pune in India. And Mulkraj Anand is specifically known for his uh, realistic and sympathetic representation of the poorer classes in India. And he is also known as one of the most important founders of the English language Indian novel. And these are uh, his most famous works, um, the first two, The Untouchable published in 1935 and uh, The Coolie published in 1936 uh, deal very rigorously with the problems of poverty in the Indian um, nation. And the other works which are of um, equal importance are uh, The Village published in 1939, The Sword and the Sickle 1942 and The Big uh, Heart uh, published in 1945 and uh, a revised edition uh, came out in 1980. Now uh, let's come to his uh, short fiction and Mukraj Anand has written quite a lot of short stories as well. Um, this particular short fiction, The Price of Bananas also deals with a very uh, uh, interesting theme uh, in the Indian society and uh, that is uh, you know the, the idea of uh, some sort of punishment being given to one um, due to his uh, personal uh, folly or foible or uh, misdeed and uh, one of the central characters in this particular story also gets punished uh, in a way through a very strange means and, uh, um, and how uh, the narrator looks at that um, central character and the way that punishment is meted out to um, this uh, interesting central protagonist or antagonist is what the story is about. So, um, the price of bananas is uh, narrated in the first person by uh, an artist, a painter and uh, he talks about uh, his uh, informal pilgrimage uh, which he um, you know um, undertook on the previous year and uh, he hopes to narrate that informal pilgrimage through paint uh, through the language that he is very familiar with and is that and that is the language of uh, paint and crayons and uh, pencils and um, though that is his usual language uh, that he really likes and is very very deft in uh, there is one particular incident that he really wants to narrate through uh, writing through um, through words and he says that he's going to do a verbal description of that particular episode because it talks about uh, certain shades of feeling that is manifest in, in the Indian country and um, uh, such shades could also be uh, seen as being very amusing too. So, um, this pilgrimage that he undertakes is also a combination of the beautiful and the squalid. So, there are uh, a multitude, um, multifarious means multitude, uh, various sets of beautiful scenery that he came across during his um, pilgrimage and that is a uh, good subject matter for uh, the painter who wants to bring out the, the beautiful um, sides that he has come across. And he he has also seen uh, equal number of squalid scenes and that uh, one such squalid scene is what uh, this particular painter is going to uh, narrate through words. So, as I mentioned, he uh, this is a first person narrator that we have in this particular story and he is an artist and he says that uh, uh, the only language that I know is uh, painting, um, uh, the, the implication is that the only language that I know really well is painting, but um, for a particular incident he is going to venture like an adventurer um, on a verbal description of that particular incident. 
accident because a mere drawing will not be sufficient to bring about, uh, bring out the several shades of feeling that um, this uh, incident uh, has uh, for the uh, reader. So, uh, he says that a mere drawing is not going to be useful and uh, he is going to venture on uh, a, a short uh, write up of that particular uh, event. And the, another implication there is that I am not a deaf narrator, but I am going to try my hand at it. So, the um, passage, the particular passage that uh, we are interested in, in this particular uh, set of ideas is the very opening um, uh, uh, narration uh, from Mulkraj Anand and that is this. He says, um, during the informal pilgrimage of the ancient cities of India, which I made last year, I came across many things, multifarious, beautiful and squalid scenes and a great deal happened to me, which I hope to record in the only language I know, the language of the sharpened pencil, the colored crayons and the paint brush. Um, but there is one incident which I remember that compels me to put pen to paper. So, the idea of being compelled is very, very interesting. Um, you know, the very incident seems to bring out this particular mode of narration, uh, which is done through words. Uh, so, um, he says, which I remember that compels me to put pen to paper because a mere drawing will not help. So, I am venturing, um, I am going to try my hand on a verbal description of this episode, which may perhaps prove to be as amusing using as it is significant. So, it is a combination of both the, um, you know, the, the funnier aspects as well as the profound aspects of uh, life in uh, India as it is significant of certain shades of feeling in our vast country. So, um, this is what the first person narrator uh, offers as a premise to uh, you know, kind of give us a description of that particular incident which happened to him during his informal pilgrimage last year. So, um, this narrator is in uh, Faisabad railway station and he is on the way to uh, Lucknow and um, he uh, kind of um, sets forth on giving a historical, mythical, uh, religious context for this particular place Faisabad and he says that it is the Mughal name for Ayodhya and as we know Ayodhya is the capital of King Dasrata and uh, he was the father of God King Rama in this religious epic um, of India which is Ramayana. So, from that setting of uh, Faisabad uh, railway station we move into mythical religious uh, epic territory of the Ramayana and um, he further says that that uh, Ramayana which is about the uh, defeat of Ramana, uh, the demon king of Lanka at the hands of uh, this god king Rama who managed to defeat this demon king with the help of the monkey general Hanuman and his hordes of monkeys, lemurs, apes and gorillas. So, uh, from um, this station uh, Faisabad, we have come to the notion of uh, the monkey hordes, uh, uh, the different kinds of uh, species of monkeys uh, which were under the control of the uh, monkey general Hanuman um, has been established very, very deftly, cleverly by this uh, narrator. So, he says that uh, the descendants of the monkey army in Ayodhya, um, you know, some of them uh, settled in that uh, region itself while the others migrated to the rest of the uh, country and these uh, monkeys uh, held on to their heredity their traditions, um, the noble ideals, um, you know, um, the, the high quality of mind, the rituals and even the riotous excesses. And, um, uh, my, one of the homeworks that I would suggest for uh, the, uh, the students on the course is to find out about the riotous excesses of um, the, the monkey uh, general uh, Hanuman in the Ramayana. I'll come back to that uh, a bit later, but I would like to uh, I would like you to find out about the riotous excesses that this uh, general carried out, and which is made reference here um, uh, in, in in this particular story. 
So, um, uh, according to this narrator, uh, we have a combination of a traditionally uh, noble behavior and a sense of hilarity, um, you know, a, a sense of the amusement, mockery, sarcasm that um, is embedded uh, in, in the uh, characteristics of uh, the monkeys in this vast country who are the descendants of the monkey hordes um, who helped uh, the god king Rama in um, achieving his uh, purpose, which is uh, the defeat uh, of uh, the demon king of Lanka. Okay, so um, uh, so we, we 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 are here in this um, uh, idea of setting, the notion of setting, uh, which is deeply connected to uh, the theme uh, of the story. And um, again, uh, this, the key figure in these two uh, aspects of of the story analysis is the figure of the uh, monkeys. And these monkeys are, um, you know, known to perform miracles. They're known to perform tricks and and they also perform antics and some of the monkeys who do all these are uh, commonly seen especially the ones who do tricks and antics are commonly seen um, in, in, the, in the streets of India and uh, the narrator says that the agility uh, or, or uh, the, 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 the strategies or the agility or the tricks that these monkeys perform today um, are comparable to the agility the sharpness uh, of behavior and thought of General Hanuman uh, himself. So, there is a comparison, a, a kind of connection or an association that is drawn between the monkeys of today and um, General Hanuman and his troops of the, um, uh, of the regime of uh, God King Rama in those days in Ayodhya. Okay, so, um, and, and, and uh, he wants to reinforce, this narrator wants to reinforce this point that the monkeys have lost none of their capacity for fun and their instinctive ability to spot out a demon whom they can fight or amuse themselves with uh, as remained as sharp and uncanny as of yore. Yore means uh, ancient. Okay, so. Um, the monkeys of today have not lost their uh, capabilities for fun, amusement and they also have retained that instinctive ability, that innate inborn ability to find out a demon, uh, a, a person who is evil whom they can fight or amuse, whom they can fight physically uh, using their strength or amuse themselves with or play with them and, and this quality, this, uh, this blend of the, the funny and the, and the cruel maybe has remained as sharp and uncanny uh, as in the ancient day. So, uh, they inevitably do that. So, that is what the narrator wants to establish. So, it is very, uh, uh, Mulkra Janath has beautifully uh, set up, um, you know, a particular uh, characteristic for the attitude of the monkeys by connecting it to their mythical past and that kind of is the uh, most important driving force of this particular uh, uh, story, the price of bananas. So, as I said, um, these are the characteristics that they have in themselves, which is, um, you know, find out an evil person to fight with them or amuse uh, themselves with and this ability is sharp and, and canny. And um, these are some of the things that we need to keep in mind when we read the set of incidents which are going to follow in this particular. So, the setup has been done. So, this is the, uh, the key uh, to the puzzle that is going to follow in this uh, price of banana. Story. So, uh, as, uh, we can uh, map this out as well because uh, this is, as I said, the crux of the story. Um, it begins in the railway station, the Faiz uh, Faizabad railway station, and that uh, has a historical name which is Ayodhya, and that Ayodhya is associated with Rama and uh, um, General Hanuman, and um, these two uh, connect um, the present day monkeys uh, and their character because um, Lord Rama and General Hanuman are the uh, key figures who kind of help us uh, understand the characteristics of the monkeys. Uh, 
um, uh, who have a particular set of behavior in relation to uh, establishing justice um, you know, wherever they are. Okay. So, through the setting, what I am uh, trying to argue here is that uh, through the setting, uh, the significance of the role of monkeys is established uh, in this particular story. It is almost as if uh, the, the following set of events are, um, in, are supposed to be interpreted in uh, keeping this particular uh, notion in mind. So, it is a, a kind of a theoretical foreshadowing of events that is what I would uh, um, uh, suggest. So, uh, a theoretical uh, underpinning for the following um, set of scenes is offered in the brief narrative about uh, um, Lord Rama and General Hanuman and uh, the role of the uh, monkey troops in this uh, mythic um, in this religious epic the Ramayana. So, uh, we are in this railway station and uh, this uh, narrator who is a painter um, acts as a spectator of the events on the railway station and what is he looking at? He is looking at the uh, monkey holds uh, in this uh, station and there are different kinds of monkeys. Um, we have the monkey mothers and uh, we have the older monkeys and we have the younger uh, fraternity and uh, the monkey mothers Others are um, serious about collecting food uh, which they help feed um, the uh, their young ones and we have the older monkeys enjoying a good old scratch and we have the younger set of monkeys a younger community fraternity which um, uh, which is skillfully uh, you know um, sitting on the branches and they are waiting for a moment to pounce on some of the meager spoils uh, stuff that is uh, available to uh, eat so this is the context and I have uh, uh, that uh, extract here. So, the monkey mothers, it is a very uh, interesting passage that uh, um, gives us a, a set of uh, notions about the uh, landscape of this particular uh, region and what are the fractures there in terms of the uh, symbolism in terms of the major concerns. The monkey mothers were hugging their little ones tenderly as they descended now and then from the perches to collect half sucked mango stones and the remainders of food from the platform. So, they are scavenging there, um, they are scavenging food to offer it to their children. The older monkey sat enjoying a good old scratch which is so soothing in the hot weather as they have obviously learned from the loin cloth wearing merchants of our city. So, the, the monkeys here apes the human beings and the younger fraternity sat adroitly skillfully on the thinnest boughs of neem and tamarind trees camouflaged by the leaves and so poised as to jump down with alacrity in pursuit of any meager spoils that may be visible in the famished landscape of Uttar Pradesh. So, this is the setup and, and through the behavior of the monkeys, the mothers, the older monkeys, the younger, younger monkeys, Mulkraj Anand is trying to communicate the idea that food is scarce uh, for the population uh, in this region and they uh, do their best to uh, get by. So, they are uh, uh, they, they lead their lives as scavengers, they lead their lives as uh, you know uh, looters because the younger fraternity of monkeys as, as is mentioned is eager to uh, uh, you know uh, kind of go after any small uh, leftovers um, and they are e eager to snatch this from their um, you know from their uh, locality from their environment and uh, the famished landscape of Uttar Pradesh is a very uh, interesting set of uh, um, uh, uh, set of words that tell us about the, the context of food scarcity in this region. So, uh, again um, um, it is it's the, the onus is on the monkeys, uh, monkey mothers especially to take care of their little ones and that is a very interesting idea that is placed there. So, the tenderness uh, that, that is there in the story, uh, very, f uh, very, few, very few reference to tenderness in the story and one such reference is in the context of the monkey mother, mothers and the other um, uh, and the other reference I will come to uh, in, in, a, in a short while. So, this is something that we need to keep in mind. Um, we have the uh, literal 
context of poverty, scarcity, um, you know, a, a dearth of food uh, um, uh, on this uh, famished, la hungry landscape. That's something we need to keep in mind. And then we need to think about the, um, you know, uh, the nobility of, of um, you know, well, character of the monkeys, as well as the, the sense of righteousness that they have, and 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 um, you know the the power that they have to punish the wicked. So uh, we need to keep all these very varied set of ideas in mind when we uh, approach this particular story. So. Uh, the train station is also very uh, important in talking about the uh, various classes in uh, society because uh, the train uh, compartment is divided into uh, the mm, three classes, the third class compartment for the lowest of the low, the intermediate uh, for the middle classes, the first class for the really wealthy and the rich. And, um, the narrator says that uh, um, there is a mad rush uh, on the part of the people to find a place um, in, the, in, the, in the compartments, in, in the third class compartment as well as in the intermediate compartment and there are uh, loud words, there is gnashing of teeth and all these um, angry, uh, wild, slightly inhuman, animal-like behavior becomes manifest when people fight for space in these um, uh, compartments uh, in, in the third class and he says it, it's especially uh, abominable, uh, abominable uh, when we uh, think about the intermediate because we have the middle class people fighting for space and behaving in a um, uh, less sophisticated manner so and that's to be loathed uh, that's what is the implication uh, behind the uh, critique of the narrator in this particular story and um, what I'm uh, trying to uh, connect here is the comparison between uh, the people with their animal like behavior when they want to uh, you know find a space for themselves uh, a good space for themselves on these um, different compartments and uh, the uh, monkeys um, the especially the young uh, fraternity who are uh, eager to fight for any uh, kind of spoils that's available uh, around them so that there is a comparison there between the humans and the uh, monkeys there uh, and and there's a parallel in their behavior because both are dealing with some kind of scarcity and for the um, human beings it's scarcity of space but for the mm, uh, monkeys it's scarcity of food. Okay. We have the, uh, I have not talked about the first class compartment there, I uh, will come to it um, in connection with this particular slide. The narrator. Um, uh, is is uh, is a person who usually belongs to the middle uh, class uh, in society. He's part of the middling classes, uh, but um, you know, in, in this particular occasion, he qualifies into the first class uh, compartment because uh, he has uh, had some money which he got from a, a Delhi show of his picture. So he has a kind of a, um, a, a nest egg. Um, he he has a, a particular amount of money, and he is able to spend some, um, uh, you know. Uh, money money in buying a first class uh, ticket which is why uh, in this particular context he is there among the bureaucrats and the really wealthy people um, in, and, and uh, he gets a kind of a, a specific window into life from this particular position at the top of the hierarchy. And, um, this narrator boards the train, but he realizes that the atmosphere is torrid, it's unbearably hot. So the torrid atmosphere of the compartment uh, is unbearable and he walked out onto the platform. So uh, I put that um, uh, phrase there to uh, suggest a symbolic connection there between uh, and the atmosphere and the um, the quality of, of character of some of the uh, people who inhabit that space because we are going to uh, see shortly uh, about a character called uh, Setji. Um, he is a businessman and his uh, his mind is torrid as well. He's unbearable to be around. So I'm, I'm trying to make an association between the train compartment, the first class uh, train compartment and this unbearable um, character called Setji who has booked a space for himself in this particular compartment. So the narrator is um, on the platform and he witnesses the set of events that unfold uh, before him. 
So, um, and we have a very interesting event, a kind of a, a, a run up to the major crisis in the story. So it's, it's a kind of a, a mini crisis, an interesting incident, a foreshadowing of the bigger event that's going to happen to this particularly interesting character of the Setji, whom I'm going to talk about in a minute. So this is the uh, incident. The narrator says, then I was fascinated by the genius of a monkey in snatching away the loincloth of a pious Hindu who had begun to take bath under the pump. Remember, we are in the railway station, so uh, that's, that uh, context should be uh, taken note of. The general amusement wa that was caused by this incident became hilarious laughter when after the bather had supplicated to the monkey with joint hands, the generous simian threw down um, the loin cloth from the neem tree at the man's feet. It seemed as though the station master had trained the monkeys to keep good order on the platform. So this is the interesting um, incident. So I hope you understand what's going on there. So we have a pious Hindu who has been taking a bath there and his loincloth had been snatched away by a monkey and this pious Hindu uh, you know uh, pleads uh, to the simian to the monkey to um, give him uh, the loincloth back and uh, the uh, monkey uh, accedes gives him the cloth back. So, um, the comment, um, the last comment in that particular extract is very interesting uh, because it is uh, the narrator says that it seemed as though the station master had trained the monkeys to keep good order on the platform. So, what is good order? That is a question that we need to ask. So, what is good order? The good order in this um, railway station is perhaps not to take a bath under the pump. So, uh, and the pious Hindu breaks that unwritten rule um, or placed there by the station master and um, this particular monkey seems to act on the orders of the station master and um, to uh, enforce order. So again the idea that the monkeys are um, the custodians of good behavior, the custodians of um, righteousness in society is underlined in this particular incident too. And the other point that I want to uh, highlight here is that uh, um, there is amusement. Uh, so the monkey uh, enforces the rule by um, provoking hilarious laughter. And um, the other point that we need to uh, pay attention to is the fact that this pious Hindu does not uh, shout at the monkey, he does not threaten the monkey, he just um, you know uh, supplicated to the monkey, he pleaded to the monkey, he begged the monkey uh, to uh, return his loin cloth and the uh, generous simian. So this generous hearted simian um, does that, um, you know, uh, he, it, it, it kind of uh, listens to the uh, um, supplication and behaves accordingly. So this is a very um, important incident with which we can compare the later uh, extended incident that happens to this businessman called Setji. Okay, so uh, we have the big crisis in the story, which is um, uh, that the, a monkey snatches the cap of a businessman, and uh, this businessman walks down the platform, and he has a coolie who is walking behind a little farther off, uh, and that coolie is almost weighed down with the amount of luggage that he um, uh, carries for the uh, businessman, the, the set. And this particular uh, businessman is wearing very expensive clothes. Um, in fact, it's it's a muslin dhoti and a delicate Lucknow tunic, all very fine, sophisticated clothes. Clothes, and he he's also um, uh, donning an embroidered cap. And it is this particular cap uh, that has been snatched by the um, monkey. And this um, business, businessman becomes disoriented when this um, theft happens. So, um, 
the character of the set is established through uh, several things and most primarily with his relation to uh, the coolie and um, this uh, businessman is especially harsh and unsympathetic and I would like to um, briefly read the relevant extract um, because this is the uh, a kind of a, a motivation for the crisis to um, happen. So, uh, while all this was going on, I noticed that a gentleman, a businessman by the look of him, clad in a white muslin dhoti, a delicate lucknow tunic and an embroidered cap on his head, had come up towards our first class compartment and stood looking at the white reservation card to see if his name was on it. He recognized his name on the card and turning beckoned to the coolie who was following uh, with his luggage, a big steel trunk and hold all and several small baskets and a brass jug. Weighed down by the two enormous articles on his head, the coolie could not see the set. So the businessman shouted, all right, come here, can't you see blind one here? So um, he uh, shouts at the coolie and asks him if he is blind. In fact, uh, we need to know that this is uh, blindness caused by the set himself because um, and this is uh, this is momentary blindness and it is also um, uh, symbolic blindness I would uh, suggest a blindness that is created by the exploitation of um, the set and the set is representative of all the exploitative uh, traders and merchants who extract the maximum from um, people such as the uh, coolie that we have here in this uh, particular situation. So, um, before uh, these and, 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 the, and the coolie responds by saying, Aya Huzur, I'm, I'm coming and he quickens his pace. But before these reassuring words could have reached the set, he was unnerved completely, not by default of the coolie, but by the adroit skill of a monkey who leapt down from the top of her compartment, snatched away the fine embroidered cap of the businessman and got up to the neem tree. So, um, the businessman becomes completely uh, unnerved, disoriented, um, unstable uh, because of the fact that his embroidered cap is gone, taken away, snatched by the monkey. And uh, we can assume that this uh, monkey is from the younger fraternity that the narrator notices when he is, uh, uh, you know, looking at the monkeys on the neem trees. And, and, and that particular word, the ad, word adro, the skillful um, monkey uh, is, is a word that the choice of word adro, sharp, uh, makes us think about the other monkeys, the, the, the monkeys who are the descendants of um, General Hanuman and his horde of monkeys uh, is, is kind of uh, suggested there through that particular choice of word. And again, the word um, adroit is, is uh, mentioned in, in connection with the younger fraternity who sit adroitly on the thinnest boughs of neem and tamarind trees. So we can see a connection there between uh, um, Hanuman's monkey and um, the monkeys on the train uh, station of Faizabad or, or Ayodhya. So uh, this embroidered cap is particularly uh, important for um, the men in India, especially in North India. It's, it's because uh, it is a symbol of dignity. It's a symbol of self-respect. And when that is taken away by the monkey, um, this man becomes um, completely uh, upset. and, and um, it's, it's very interesting that this particular incident happens right after, um, right after the fact that, uh, after the fact that um, the Setji is harassing um, the coolie. Uh, he calls him a blind one. So uh, it's almost as if the, the monkeys who have been watching on the trees have made a quick 
decision. They see this man, Setji, uh, abusing this coolie, this poor worker who is um, literally blinded by, momentarily blinded by the amount of material that he is carrying uh, for the set. And they, and they watch that scene of uh, abuse. Um, the monkeys make a quick decision to punish this particular demon within courts and they do um, and they do this um, act of snatching. So that that's what is implied there uh, thematically in the attitude of the particular monkey that snatches the uh, cat. So uh, what is the reaction of the set? The, 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 the set is very very abusive of the monkey and he threatens the monkey who has got back on the neem tree and the monkey however is unaffected completely uh, you know unaffected disturb, un, uh, uh, undisturbed by the um, uh, words of um, the set and um, the narrator says that it is perhaps the same skillful simian who had played the prank on the bather so um, the narrator thinks it's the same monkey who uh, attacked um, the, the the pious hindu by snatching his lion cloth and uh, when, once he mentions that connection, the immediate question or, or the immediate comparison that we have uh, in our minds is the difference in attitudes. On the one hand, we had uh, the pious Hindu who uh, who did not uh, abuse the monkey and uh, on the on the contrary he pleads with the monkey and here we have the set who is um, you know shouting at the monkey in order to get his cap back so that contrast in attitude becomes a uh, very very clear and we can see why this particular monkey is not very generous to the set and 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 uh, it refuses to return the cap so um, the questions that we need to ask is this, um, so just as in the previous case, is this behavior of this uh, simian an um, act of enforcing discipline? So um, uh, is, correct, uh, is corrective behavior enforced through the behavior of this particular monkey which has snatched away the cap and is this corrective behavior um, uh, in context uh, in the context of polite um, uh, polite behavior that should be extended towards the uh, lower orders in society so we we should also remember that particular um, uh, uh, you know uh, comment made by the narrator early on that the monkeys have this instinctive ability to spot a demon whom they can fight or amuse themselves with. So we have a demon here who is the uh, businessman, the Setji, and um, his behavior, his um, unsympathetic, hard behavior towards the um, coolie is being uh, criticized by this uh, monkey which has taken away his cap. So. Uh, what are the repercussions in terms of the onlookers on the train station? So the uh, this, uh, the narrator says that the set is perplexed, uh, is confused, is puzzled by the lack of sympathy from the onlookers who are uh, watching this uh, scene um, happen before their eyes. And uh, in fact, some of the onlookers also laugh at the way he challenges threatens and, and um, makes imprecations towards the uh, a monkey. So they laugh at this and an imprecation is uh, a spoken curse. So when uh, this particular um, when this particular uh, uh, man, the businessman, uh, looks at the onlookers um, and, and hopes to get some kind of sympathy, they uh, turn their face away or look stone faced as they often do for fear of being dragged into giving evidence before the police. So um, the narrator says that um, the onlookers uh, do not offer sympathy because they do not want to uh, get into uh, some kind of trouble uh, or some kind of work with the police because they might have to give some evidence and, and things like that. So they, they don't want to uh, get into any kind of incident because they want to save their skin. So unnecessary trouble they don't want, which seems to be the understanding, which seems to be the case um, when these uh, onlookers uh, don't want to 
help the set. So, again um, the attitude of the crowd uh, uh, is very, very interesting. Um, why the crowd does not step in to help or uh, to um, you know uh, question injustice that is happening is again uh, um, is kind of hinted out. Perhaps the crowd behaves in that particular way because the system is itself is not very helpful to the people who want to carry out such um, you know activities. Okay, so we have um, uh, you know two uh, sets of attitude here, which can be interpreted um, uh, in, in in terms of the onlookers. They are indifferent. They are stone faced, and uh, that's the reality. Uh, and that's that's one interpretation. And the other interpretation is that they laugh and they mock. Um, uh, the uh, the sets because they are sympathetic to the cause of the monkey. So so we can interpret the actions of the onlookers in two ways, and and that is very very uh, interesting. So thank you for watching. I'll continue this point uh, further in my uh, next lecture. Thank you for watching. Um, have a good day.